Good morning and welcome to God's Desert Foothills. Thank you so much for joining us for our Sunday worship service, albeit digitally. I am excited that we are slowly and slowly phasing back into uh, a more normal routine and, and normal operations here at the church. Uh, we do have uh, in-person, on-campus uh, services on Saturday mornings for uh, word and sacrament uh, prayer and praise. If you can uh, go to our site and log in, uh, you can sign up for one of those slots. We're still keeping the numbers, uh, you know, the uh, capacity to uh, what uh, the recommendations are at the time uh, while we still uh, make plans for how we're going to get everybody safely uh, in and out of the uh, the worship facilities uh, over the summer. So uh, very excited about that. Very excited to have uh, be able to share the gospel online with you like this, as well as a lot of the other online content that we have now for spiritual growth. Uh, I'm just so amazed at how, uh, how many people have been uh, impacted by that. The feedback that I get <clears throat> from so many of you uh, of how God is still speaking to you, God is still growing your faith, and reaching hundreds of people uh, with the faith, with the gospel for the first time or for the first time in decades, uh, some of the amazing stories that I've heard uh, just through all of this emphasis now on our online church. So we praise God for that, and we want to continue uh, to improve that uh, while at the same time uh, we're working on, again, again gathering again within our worship spaces. Uh, do check out our Bible studies. Uh, Pastor Jeremy and I are doing a study on the book of Acts right now. It's Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock on our YouTube channel. Uh, Christy has a wonderful uh, program she does called Music Notes, where she examines uh, some of our favorite songs, or Christian songs, and gives the background to it and a lot of the, explains a lot of the meaning, not just behind the words and also behind the music. And of course, we have daily devotions also on our YouTube channel every day. Uh, me or Pastor Jeremy or Pastor Brooks or Pastor Haynes, uh, we thank you for your contributions as well. Uh, this is Pentecost, the birthday of the church, as it were, the day the Holy Spirit came down on those disciples of Jesus, uh, just as Jesus had promised that helper, that uh, comforter that will be with us, uh, forever is, is with us and is within his church, uh, continuing to work and grow and move the kingdom of God from Jerusalem to Judea, Judea to Samaria to the ends of the earth. And here we are on the opposite end of the earth 2,000 years later, uh, proclaiming the name of Jesus as our Savior and our Lord. The sermon series this week concludes family life. Uh, we've talked about uh, marriage, parenting, and today, very fittingly on Pentecost, uh, we talk about our church family. So I look forward uh, to hearing from Pastor Jeremy on that in just a minute. I pray God's blessings on our worship this morning. Uh, we'll begin with the first song. Please, please sing along.
We begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From Acts chapter 2. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said, What shall we do? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that without you, we are in the darkness of sin. Cleanse us from our sin, thaw our frozen hearts, unable to love. Bend our inflexible will and foolish pride to your will. Guide us who are so apt to stray from your commands. Fill us, Holy Spirit. Forgive us, Lord Jesus. Gift us, Heavenly Father. Amen. The promise is for you and for your children, for all who call upon the name of the Lord for forgiveness and salvation. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, it is my privilege to tell you that all of your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, send us the Holy Spirit who cuts us to the heart with the words of God, who opens our hearts to hear the language of your love, and who enters our hearts that out of them may flow streams of living water. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now hear God's holy word. The Old Testament reading begins in the book of Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. It was not because you were more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love on you and chose you, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But it is because the Lord loves you and is keeping the oath that he swore to your fathers that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Ephesians, the second chapter. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 12th chapter. While he was still speaking to the people, behold, his mother and his brothers stood outside asking to speak to him. But he replied to the man who told him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. This is the Gospel of the Lord. 
At this point in our service, we take a moment to pause and thank God for all of the blessings that we have in our lives. Uh, One way that some people stop to pause and thank God is by donating uh, beautiful altar flowers just like these, donated by Ron and Betty Green, remembering their 61st wedding anniversary. So praise God for that great gift uh, that he's given you of a wonderful long marriage and life. And we certainly pray God continues to bless you with good health and with peace. For uh, all of us, though, uh, during this upcoming song after the offering, I just encourage you to just meditate on God's gifts to you. And if the Spirit leads you to give uh, financially to his mission, uh, you can do that online also at dflc.org slash give. Or you can mail checks into the church as well. Uh, We are so thankful for all of the support, and it has been much support uh, over these last couple of months. Uh, We're very grateful for your continued faithfulness and stewardship of God's blessings. Fill me up, come Holy Spirit, fill me up to the top of my soul. Fill me up, come Holy Spirit, fill me up now and take control. Fill me up, come Holy Spirit, fill me up to the top of my soul. Fill me up, come Holy Spirit, fill me up now and take control. Fill me up, come Spirit, come. Fill me up, Holy Spirit, oh, so many things try to fill me up. Fill me up, come Spirit, come. So many things try to weigh me down. Fill me up, come Holy Spirit, come. Fill me up now until you stay. Fill me up, come Spirit, come. And chase the other things Holy Spirit, fill me up to the top of my soul. Fill me up, come Holy Spirit, fill me up now and take control. Fill me up, come Spirit, come. Fill me up, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, fill me up to the top of my soul. Fill me up, come Holy Spirit, fill me up now and take control. Fill me up, come Holy Spirit, fill me up to the top of my soul. Fill me up, come Holy Spirit, fill me up now and take control. Fill me up now and take control. Fill my own spirit, fill me up, fill me up. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Bye. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you have blessed us in love with the Savior to whom the nations cry and in whom is forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Grant to us your Holy Spirit, the Comforter, that we and all who call upon his name shall be saved. Help us to treasure in our hearts your mercy and to give ourselves fully to your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised the thirsty will drink and from the empty will flow forth rivers of living water. 
Help us to show forth in holy lives the fruits of the Spirit and to live with love toward our neighbor. Give us a servant's heart that doesn't seek our own way, but walks on the path of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to make one people from the many. Take from us all pride, prejudice, and hate that we may not hinder the cause of the gospel by our shame, but give welcome to all people in the name of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have ordered all things in heaven and on earth. Bless our president, our governor, the Congress, and all elected and appointed civil servants, that the rule of law may protect the weak preserve life from conception to its natural end, and peace may reign for the benefit of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, have mercy and spare us. Put an end to this pandemic and restore the communities of the world to their common life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you carry the burdens of our lives in your hands. Deliver from illness and suffering all who cry to you for release. Hear us on behalf of the sick, the dying, and those who mourn. Answer your people, O Lord, and deliver them from their infirmities and their grief by your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear your people for the sake of him who loved us even to death and who lives to call to himself all who will be saved. You know what we need and those things we should ask in your name. Grant them to us for the sake of our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hi, everyone.
Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Pastor Jeremy, with the privilege of coming to be able to preach the sermon to you today. And for our message, I thought I could come from our worship center to be able to sit here with you this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, we've done a lot of our recording from our amazing sanctuary where we host our traditional worship. We've done some in our columbarium and other venues. And today to kind of bring it all together, I thought I could just highlight another place here on campus to see the versatility that we have as a congregation. It's kind of hit upon a main point that we're looking at in today's sermon, that God has created us as this unique body. All of us have these different parts, have these different abilities, have these different needs, but all of us, when we come together under our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, make this great and wonderful church. And I'm not just talking about us here at Desert Foothills. This is an all important principle for our congregation, but it's true for all Christians and for all churches throughout the world. Uh, let me back up for just a minute here. Uh, we're talking about uh, a series that we're in right now on family life. Uh, two weeks ago, we began with talking about the subject of marriage and seeing the importance of both males and females within this union that God has created and uh, the special roles which they fill, not only in this relationship, but also within God's church. Uh, last week, we talked about the subject of parenting, of grandparenting, you name it, and saw the importance that it is for all people, no matter if they have kids of their own or not, to be able to work together in building up the church, uh, of knowing the responsibility that we have for the spiritual lives of the next generation, and truly the church not just of tomorrow, but the church of today. And so this morning, we kind of bring it all back together and recognize, wow, all of us are united in this family of God. But what does that mean? What is the importance that is there? Uh, did you hear that gospel text for today? Isn't it kind of unique? Jesus seems to make almost this small comment that kind of rubs his uh, immediate family, those that are a part of his DNA, a, a little bit differently. Uh, Jesus is sitting down and he's teaching. People are listening to him. It seems to be a great crowd. His mother and brothers come to be able to speak with him. It seems like uh, they can't get to him because they have to pass this message on, kind of like the game of telephone. And when it reaches Jesus that his mother and brothers are outside, he says something that is kind of different. Review that with me again today from our gospel text. Again, it is the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verses 48 and 49. He replied to him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Now, first of all, who is the disciple that was standing there when Jesus first points and says, uh, Here is my mother and here are my brothers? Was it Matthew standing there and he's thinking to himself, oh man, I, I really got to cut this hair. I should not have done this man bun for the day. No, but in all seriousness, what is, what is Jesus saying? This is my mother. These are my brothers. No, they're, they're outside. We just said they're bringing this message to you. Well, interestingly enough, he's saying how important the relationship is with Christ in the family of believers that even for Jesus himself, the relationship that he has with his church family is more important than that of his own immediate family. And you know, right now, uh, we just wrapped up Memorial Day weekend. The summer has kind of uh, unofficially been kicked off. And maybe you've begun to, to think about, you know, when things open up or if things open up, where is my family going to go? What are we going to do? What is our future? Do you ask the same thing for your, your church family? What does this mean for my church family right now? That things are, are finally starting to, to open up a little bit. Where are we going? What are we doing? What is going to be my part in this, this great celebration of being able to be a part of God's work, of his mission and his ministry? You know, Jesus isn't the only one that, that brings this to our attention. Uh, it's talked about over and over again in scripture of the importance of being a part of God's family. The author of Hebrews uh, puts it this way from Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11. He writes, Both the one who makes people holy 
and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. You know, as a child or maybe even as an adult, did you have a favorite celebrity or maybe a favorite uh, movie star? Maybe it was somebody that you looked up to. Uh, maybe it was a football player or a professional baseball player. And did you ever think about what would it be like if I met that person? What would you do? Would you ask for an autograph? Uh, would you maybe uh, ask them to be able to take a, a picture with you? And how would they react? Because some of these personalities love being around people. Some of them, not so much. So imagine that with me today. There's somebody you've been looking forward to meeting. Uh, you finally get there and there's this huge crowd. There's all these other people that want to meet their uh, individual too. They want to meet their celebrity, their movie star, the person they look up to. They want that autograph. They want that picture and you're standing there and all of a sudden, whoever it is that you're looking forward to meet stops. Hey, can I, can I have everybody's attention for just a, a moment? I have something really important that I need to share with you. Somebody uh, I need to introduce you to. And they look at you and they say, uh, you know, this, this girl right here, she is my sister. Or this guy right, right here, he is my brother. They are a, a part of my family. And I want you, the public, to be able to know that. Now, this is how it is with Jesus. The author of Hebrews says, both for the one who makes us holy, Christ, and for the one who is made holy, sinners just like you and me, we are a part of the same family that God claims us to be his. And I love how the author writes it. He's not ashamed. He's not ashamed of, of who you are. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what your future does or does not look like, no matter how bleak your past may seem, Jesus isn't, isn't ashamed. He doesn't judge you off those things. But instead, he claims you to be a part of his family. Think about that today as we continue with our gospel lesson. Go back to that scripture with me. Uh, Matthew chapter 12, back at verse 50. Uh, Jesus says, For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Notice the identifier that Jesus puts in there. He doesn't just say, this is my mother, my brother, my, my sister. Uh, he says, the one who does the will of my Father. You see, being a part of God's family is something that is, that is active. It's something that is progressive. It's not something that is stale. It's not something that is cast aside or something that we will get around to at some point. When we are a member of Jesus' family, when he is claiming us to be united with him in this heavenly relationship, he asks of us to be active, to be responsible. Uh, maybe you have children in your household or when you were a child, did you have a chore chart, something that you did to be a part and contribute to the family? Now, maybe at some points we thought there were other things that we would rather do, that we'd rather play with our friends, that we'd rather play video games. But isn't it important also to be able to have those chores taken care of, to be able to have an orderly household, to be able to have a clean household so that we can do all of those things? And same with the life of, of Christ. God wants us to have a, a great time here on this earth. He also wants us to have these orderly lives that are focused on the Father's will, not just focus on us being selfish children in some way. And so ask yourself today, how am I living this relationship? Am I focused on God and the relationship that I have with him? Or am I focused on the, the childish, selfish things? What does it look like to be an active member of God's family? Paul goes on in our epistle lesson today to talk to us even, even more about what it truly means to know that we are not an outcast, but that we're a part of his family. From our uh, letter today that Paul writes to the church of Ephesus, uh, look at that with me, Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verse 19. Paul writes, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Now, uh, where Paul is 
uh, imprisoned at in Caesarea, there's this problem that exists. There's this frustration that is there between uh, the Jews and the Gentiles. The Jews see themselves as these chosen people, which there is some truth to that, but unfortunately, they also see uh, people on the outside of that, the Gentiles, as not being individuals who are fully a part of the family of God. And Paul says, uh, that's ridiculous. That's, com that's completely ridiculous because of what Jesus has done, not for this group, not for that group, but for everyone. And to tell you the truth, uh, these ridiculous boundaries still exist with us today. That we as individuals create sometimes a false reality based upon our perceptions. That we judge people around us based off of maybe their behavior, maybe their looks, maybe something that we saw, maybe something that they said. And sometimes we think that that person uh, couldn't be loved maybe by God. Maybe we think to ourselves at times that that person doesn't deserve it. Uh, but I hope that all of us know deep down inside that that is not the truth. That all people can be citizens and be united with the Lord. That when God sends his one and so only son to this earth, that he sends him here for all people we hear within Scripture. That he in, dies for the, the sins of the entire world. And all of us are a part of that. And even though these things still exist today, it's something that we can uh, break apart of. It's something that we as Christians need to, to fight against, to know that forgiveness has been truly provided for all, but most importantly, that all need to be able to hear this great word. And so I challenge you and myself again today, how are we doing with that, with being able to share that great word, that people are a part of that they are, are no longer strangers, that they are in the family of God. Paul goes on even further and makes a, a great analogy for us that we can share with others, and I think that really will hit home for us today. Uh, again, from Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 20. Paul says, We are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. You know, all of us will choose a foundation for life, and foundations are of utmost importance. But often foundations are forgotten, or they're just laid aside, and we don't recognize their importance, sometimes until things are too late, or until things are, are fracturing. Think about it. Even within buildings in our, our world today, you know, a lot of people like to go on vacation and maybe see different sites. Maybe they like to see uh, different works within the world. And not just uh, older structures, even modern things. Maybe somebody wants to go and see the Sears Tower or be able to see the Empire State Building or be able to see, uh, you name it, some type of massive structure. But when they get there, uh, what do they look at in those different buildings? Uh, did anybody ever tell anyone, you know, I heard you're going to the White House next week. Will you do me a favor? When you get there, will you take your entire family and please take a picture of yourself next to the foundation of the White House so I can see it? Or have you ever been walking through Old Town Scottsdale and you see a, a postcard rack and you think, oh, I'm going to send a postcard to one of my friends. And you look through the first rack and it's all the different uh, amazing structures that Frank Lloyd Wright has put together. And then you look at the next uh, rack and you think, oh, look at all these different uh, monuments from around the world. And then you look at the third rack and it's, oh, look, all the different foundations from important buildings. No, those, those don't exist. Nobody, when he gets down to it, really thinks about or wants to see the foundation of a structure again until it's it's too late until there's a, a problem there in our spiritual lives are the the same way that we are to be built on this great foundation that we have in the lord that this chief cornerstone we have in christ is to be the most important in our lives how many marriages have we seen that have been broken apart because they had a, a bad foundation to be able to start with how many uh, relationships have we seen crumble because they had a, a relationship that was founded on something that, that wasn't true, that was improper. 
you know, uh, think about it. It doesn't matter how much time, how much energy, how much effort you invest into the structure of a building. If you do all of these things without having a great foundation, at some point it will fail. And it's the exact same element within our lives, within the relationships that we have here on this earth and in the relationship that we have with Christ. Where is your foundation built at? What is it built upon? What is your number one priority? Think about that. Today, uh, we continue to move on with Ephesians. Let's wrap up our last couple verses from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 21. Uh, Paul writes, In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. Oh man, uh, isn't that just, just great news for us to be able to think about? You see, in Christ, when we have this right foundation, when we do have this chief cornerstone, that everything comes together, that it comes to fruition, that it is put to place just as God intended. You see, this is how the body of Christ or the family of Christ really is made to function. And when we see it at its healthiest moments, when you and I as people of God are united together, we are this structure that is built on this solid foundation of Christ. And again, so I hope even now you were thinking about Man, when we really get things up and running, what are we going to do together as a congregation? What are we going to do together as a family? What are we going to do just even as individuals to be an active member of the body of Christ? Because we are a part of this family and know that the Lord has put it together just right, what does that look like? And you know what? Don't wait until we're uh, back together worshiping again in person. What can you do now? What can you do today, either with your own life or with your own family, to be able to continue to strengthen and build this relationship? So close with me on this final verse that Paul writes for us from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22. He writes, And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit. Wow, uh, this is truly the the good news for today. Uh, you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. No one in this world is. No one in this world ever has been except for Christ. But our Lord promises this progression. Did you hear those terms that are there today? That He is He is building. That this is happening. This is something that is that is ongoing. We will never reach perfection until our creator, until that that great ultimate architect comes back to this earth and cuts that blue ribbon into the, the world of heaven and we will know perfection with him. But until that time, he champions us as his vessels, as the family of God to be able to share the blueprint of salvation that he has given unto us. Think about what that means. God has blessed you and I, his church, his body, his family, with this great gift that we now are able to pass on to others, that we are able to share with our spouse and our marriages, that we are able to share with our children, uh, grandchildren, children within our church or within our neighborhood, that we are able to share with perfect strangers, not because of what we are doing, but because of what he has already done. Today, remember what we have been given in our Lord, that God saw a problem here on this earth, that sin existed. And so he lays this strong foundation across the top of it to cover it forever. That he takes Christ, his chief cornerstone, his one and only son, and places it here on this earth for everything to be built upon, for sin to be crushed, for death to completely go away. That our Savior leaves the comfort of heaven to come here to this earth, to be here with us, to be able to to wipe out sin, death, and the devil as we know it, all so that we can become a part of his heavenly relationship, of eternal paradise with him. And so today, receive that great word from our Savior as he says, everybody stop. I have an important announcement to make. Uh, this guy right here, this, this girl right here, they are a part of my family. I am proud of them. They are forgiven and they are loved. Remember these great words of peace 
and mercy that God has given to you today. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today, and uh, thank you, Pastor Jeremy, for sharing the Word of God with us. I am so thankful that I am so blessed to have such a wonderful church family. You know, if you're only watching online right now and you haven't had a chance to be with us in person, uh, I hope we get to meet you soon. I hope you get to meet all of the wonderful people in this church family uh, that we're so blessed to be a part of. We would love to have you uh, be a part of our family. Uh, So if you're interested, if you just have any questions, uh, please send us uh, a text or an email uh, to text at dflc.org, and we'd love to get in contact with you. With that, receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.